Tom Bryant, welcome to Cultivate His Presence. I'm here with a very dear friend, Mary Cat. Hey, Mary Cat, thanks for Hi. coming. <laughs> Mary Cat is married to Andrew Aaron Zeller. You can find them on Spotify. They're like literally one of my favorite artists. And they have two precious little boys, Liam and Lucas. Today we're gonna be talking about ministering to Jesus. And on this session, I brought Mary Cat because there were some precious moments that I've witnessed where the presence of the Lord flooded the room, this room actually, during a recent recording album called Big House Worship. And we'll talk more about that moment in our second segment of this session. But just to start off, Mary Cat, if you can, you're a mom, you're a business owner. There are many moms watching, to include my wife, that are business owners, mothers, wives, artists, if you can just talk about how do you cultivate intimacy with Jesus in the midst of stewarding, you know, being a mom, being a minister, being an artist, being a business owner, et cetera, how do you cultivate that? Yeah, it's kind of a loaded question too because it's kind of hard to answer in like just a small amount of words, but yeah. I feel like it's something that you, you have to cultivate in your heart in that secret space. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't want to say it's your whole life, but for a long time, I, I cultivated that in my own heart, and I feel like God really marked me um, in a way that I didn't want anything else to yeah. get in the way of that. And so mm -hmm. I, I went through a season where just certain things were, were stripped away from me that were maybe like comforts, yeah. Um, yeah. going to the mission field or the prayer room and learning how to sit in prayer for two hours at a time or lead worship for two hours at a time. And during those times when I was single, um, you know, I got married when I was 32, so I had a lot of time to just have those things cultivated in my heart. Um, and I was marked by God like at 19 when I gave my life to Jesus. So mm. after that, it was like, I just didn't want anything else. And I would be sitting and maybe with a group of friends just talking about maybe things that are a little um, not as deep, mm. uh, and I just I just longed for more. Mm. So um, those things were cultivated when I was single, and then when I got married, it was just kind of the overflow mm -hmm. um, of what I cultivated when I was single in that time. So yeah. I feel like in the midst of crazy, busy life, even with kids, there is a longing in my heart, and so I, I, I tried to strengthen myself in the Lord yeah. through, you know, watching, like, YouTube videos or yeah. um, Upper Room. I, I'm tuning into the prayer room at IHOP. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I kind of like to listen to a lot of different teachers as well and podcasts, and I, I may be working, mm -hmm. uh, cooking, or I may be changing diapers or um, whatever with my children or my husband going, you know, cleaning the house or whatever, yeah. but I'm listening to things in my other ear, yeah. <laughs> and I have one ear out so yeah. I can hear, and I'm just strengthening myself in the Lord because I personally like to, I'm not a big reader when it comes to sitting down and having yeah. the time to read, but I like to listen to, to things mm -hmm. as I go throughout my day. And that helps me to focus on the Lord because yeah. um, it's it's a minute by minute thing for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't say that to sound like so religious yeah. or, or you, if you don't do it this way, it's just for me, I, I'm always longing to, to talk to the Lord. And so in yeah. that, it's ministering to the Lord, but I'm also receiving as well. Yeah, you mentioned in the very beginning, you protect those moments. You you protect, um, I guess this this sort of lifestyle that you've cultivated. How do you protect that? How do you perhaps block out time? I don't know, but yeah. how do you do that? Oh, I I feel like I learned how to. It was through fasting. Honestly, yeah. I, I went through a time of fasting, and then after I fasted, I was like, wow, I don't even think I want. Um, to watch TV anymore, or I'm just yeah, giving yeah. an example. Um, I went through a time of fasting um, when I was learning about fasting, um, where it was like a, the lifestyle of fasting. I just mm -hmm. was listening to different teachers when I was single. And after a week of fasting certain things, and one of those things was maybe TV, I, I was like, I don't even think I have a desire to, to watch TV. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying that people have to do it my yep. way, but, um, but I was just not drawn I felt like those things didn't um, keep me as awake. Mm. You know, they kind of um, made my spirit very dull. Yeah. And yeah. I, 
I don't like that feeling. Yeah. I don't like feeling dull in my spirit. Yeah. And so I, um, there's just certain things I can't, I don't, I don't really want to allow in my heart to, mm. to get me distracted with the Lord. And um, one of those things is just watching things, worldly things on the, yeah. on the TV or Netflix or whatever it is. I just, I'm not, those things just kind of drain me and sap me. So um, yeah. I know that sounds like, maybe, I don't know, very intense, but um, for me personally, those sorts of things just, um, I want to be awake. I want to yeah. be sober. And it's, yeah. for some people, it's very intense. And at, at first I was kind of like, maybe I'm just a really intense person, yeah. but I feel like that's how God made me. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, when you're in the world, because I experienced the world before I got saved and mm-hmm. I was really in the world. I just, those things, I don't want any part of it. I just don't want any part. And so I, that, when I say God marked me, yeah. it wasn't something that I was trying to do by my behavior or by my, you know, those things I learned through yeah. fasting or through a lifestyle of fasting. I learned some things um, and I, my desire grew more for the Lord, yeah. but it, it wasn't my behavior that changed things. I really feel like God marked me. There was um, even seasons when I had loss, like when we had, you know, mm-hmm. miscarriages, and I, I wasn't, there was just something that God put in my heart to not be angry, but to draw close to him instead of away, wow. and maybe some people's inclination would be to run away from the Lord, but there was just something in me that I was like, nothing else will satisfy the him. Yeah, I love how you're pretty much describing utilizing every part of your life to engage with God and to remove anything that will disengage your heart with God. I feel like that's, that's a huge wisdom for all of us to apply. So there's this passage I want to share, and then we'll go into the second segment. It's from 2 Chronicles 5, verse 13, 14. The context is where King Solomon has returned the Ark of the Covenant back into the temple. And look at what happens. It says here in verse 14, they began to sing, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory Mm. of the Lord filled the house. I love that, that gives me a hunger for his presence. Let's watch a short segment of Abide, a moment where the Holy Spirit um, took over and you'll see how he took over Mary Cat's heart as well. So Mary Cat, if you can teach us how to steward these particular moments where we experience the presence and perhaps perceive the Holy Spirit, how do we steward those moments, especially as a worship leader as well, if you could share. Well, like I said before, um, when you're in those moments, it it should be, this is how it should be, it should be the overflow of what Mm. you're already cultivating in your own private life. So whether you're a busy mom or a husband that works all day, nine to five, um, Mm. you know, there's those moments that you've cultivated. And so then when you're in a corporate service, your private life becomes public for a moment, Mm. just for a moment, you know? Um, 
but you kind of have to lean into the Lord. The band has to make space. Yeah. And you need to just know when to sing out and when to be uh, sensitive to what the Lord is saying to you. And so mm. actually in that moment, God was giving me a revelation that I, I just was like, wow, all of the things that I've been through in, in my life. And I actually wrote that song after my cousin um, killed herself. She, there was a suicide in our family and it was a really deep, it was a deep trauma that happened in my family and that's where that song came out of. Um, and I was remembering you know, that whole season and just feeling like it was so dark but then I just saw the Lord covering mm. me. In that time, I was getting this vision while I was in worship. And so that, that's the revelation that God was giving me. I, I was like, whoa, like that was actually your shadow. Yeah. I was like, whoa. And so that's what I was singing out. So, you know, people may be getting touched, but I'm actually getting touched in those moments. And, and that's how I look at worship. Yeah. I, I don't even see myself as a worship leader. Mm -hmm. I just see myself as a worshiper. Mm -hmm. And I just bring that into wherever I am. It may be a thousand people, it may be 50 people, it may be 10 people, it may be just me and alone with God, but it's yeah. the overflow of what, what I cultivate with the Lord, like just yeah. the dialogue I have with him you know, throughout the day. I love, I love that. Can you pray for everyone watching and who sure. will watch, specifically mothers and then just in general, if you could just yeah. Bless them. Yeah, Lord Jesus, I just, I bless the women, the moms today that are in the midst of the crazy, Lord. I, I ask that you would speak to their hearts today. I, I pray that their, their sails would be up, Lord, so that when the wind comes, they would know where to go with you, Lord, today. Even if they're cleaning, even if they're cooking, even if they're feeling a little overwhelmed, or they're working, um, or they're away from their children, or or they're just trying to figure things out in their household. Lord, I, I speak peace right now over their minds, over their spirits. I bless their spirits to hear your voice speaking to them in these times, Lord. And that would be the secret place, no matter where they are, it would be a secret place with you. I pray that they would just have an encounter with your spirit, wherever they are, wherever they are, and that you would show them, you would take them up and show them yourself that you would show them the reality of what's really going on not with what they see with their eyes may they may they have their spirit um, open today in jesus name amen amen until next time remember john 17 3 knowing jesus is life eternal god bless you